Hi, it's Mrs. Ferris from Wood Library, and I have a question for you. Are you ready for some bedtime stories? I know I am, and so is Bernard. So let's get started with a story about a little boy and a very special purple crayon. It takes him on all kinds of adventures, and this is called Harold and the Purple Crayon Under the Sea. This story is written by Liza Baker with illustrations by Kevin Morosky, and it's published by Harper Festival. It was a hot night, and Harold couldn't sleep. He wondered what he could do to cool down. He thought about it for some time. Harold grew warmer and warmer, and then he had an idea. I know, thought Harold, I'll go for a swim. Harold picked up his purple crayon and set off on an adventure. He walked and walked, searching for just the right spot. The sun beat down on him and the ground was cracked and dry. Soon Harold found the perfect place. He used his crayon to draw a puddle. Well, just then Lilac bounded up from behind and she landed in the center of the puddle and splashed Harold with mud. Lilac wagged her tail playfully. Now Harold was hot and dirty, so he drew a bigger pool of water. That way, he could clean off too. Harold liked his new bigger pool, but it was too calm. So he drew some waves, big ocean waves. Now he could swim. Harold did the crawl and Lilac did the doggy paddle. Harold began to wonder what was in the water. So he drew a submarine. Harold steered the submarine downward, passing fish of every shape and size. They saw catfish. Lilac barked. They saw dogfish, and Lilac wagged her tail. A sawfish swam toward them, and using its long, jagged nose, the sawfish sawed a hole in the side of the submarine. Thinking quickly, Harold drew scuba gear around himself and Lilac. And when they reached the ocean floor, Harold drew an underwater cave. But just as he was about to swim inside, he realized it wasn't a cave. It was the open mouth of a big tooth fish. Harold drew a sturdy cage around it and swam off. He drew a seahorse taxi. Harold and Lilac climbed onto its back and they sped off, leaving the scary fish far, far behind. The seahorse taxi stopped at an old sunken pirate ship. Harold swam from room to room to room, searching for a treasure. Harold discovered an enormous chest, but it was locked. So Harold drew a key that was just the right size. He opened the chest and the chest was full with treasure. Shiny jewels, silver coins, and even a solid gold dog bone for Lilac. Harold gave the dog the bone. Then Harold realized he was tired. Luckily, a few dolphins were playing nearby and they offered to take him on a ride to the surface. Harold and Lilac held on tight. The dolphins bounced Harold and Lilac up out of the water and when they were back on dry land, Harold looked up at the night sky. The moon was shining above them and the stars were out. Harold was sleepy. He realized it was time to go home. So he drew his bedroom window around the moon. And then Harold climbed into bed, cool at last. And as he drifted off to sleep, his purple crayon fell to the floor. Wouldn't that be fun to be able to draw all the adventures you might go on? That's what Harold does. Well, should we do a finger play? Is it too soon to shake our sillies? I don't think so. Can you shake, shake, shake your sillies out? Shake, shake, shake your sillies out. Shake, shake, shake your sillies out and wiggle your waggles away. And can you clap, clap? Clap your crazies out, clap, clap, clap your crazies out, clap, clap, clap.
clap your crazies out and wiggle your waggles away. Can you stretch, stretch, stretch your stretchies out, stretch, stretch, stretch your stretchies out, stretch, stretch, stretch your stretchies out and wiggle your waggles away. Can you stand up so that you can jump, jump, jump your jiggles out, jump, jump, jump your jiggles out, jump, jump, jump your jiggles out and wiggle your waggles away. Can you yawn? Yawn your sleepies out, yawn. Yawn your sleepies out, yawn. Yawn your sleepies out and wiggle your waggles away. Can you shake, shake, shake your sillies out, shake, shake, shake your sillies out, shake, shake, shake your sillies out and wiggle your waggles away. Let's go on a little race. This is called Around the House, the Fox Chased the Mouse. This is written by Rick Walton and illustrated by Jim Bradshaw. And it's published by Gibbs Smith. And it's all about something, well, it's a very fancy word, prepositions. And it says here that a preposition is a word that connects a noun or pronoun to show a relationship between them. So we'll see what that means. Around the house. The fox chased the mouse. Under the fence. Bah. Into the barn. <coughs> Out the window. Uh oh. Through the chicken coop. Bark. Bark. Bark, cock a doodle doo! Beneath the tractor. Bzzz. Across the field. Moo! Beside the river. Bloop! Up in the tree. Off the branch, uh-oh. Between the signs. Over the rocks. Until. Tag, you're it, said the fox. And then, over the rocks, the mouse chased the fox. So I bet they'll go all the way back. What do you think? Okay. Should we do another finger play? Let me think here. I've got my five little hot dogs that are cooking in the pan. The grease got hot and one went bam. So four little hot dogs are cooking in the pan. The grease got hot and one went bam. Three little hot dogs are cooking in the pan. The grease got hot and one went bam. Two little hot dogs are cooking in the pan. The grease got hot and one went bam. One little hot dog is cooking in the pan. The grease got hot and the one went bam. So now no little hot dogs are cooking in the pan. The grease got hot and the pan went bam. Well, has anyone ever told you that you needed to be quiet? Well, that's exactly what's going to be happening in this story about a hippo. This is called too Loud Lily. It's written by Sophie Laguna and illustrated by Carrie Argent. And it's published by Scholastic Press. 
Now everyone told Lily Hippo she was too loud. Lily Hippo, keep it down, please. I can't hear myself think, said Dad. Lily Hippo, sing quietly. You'll wake the baby, said Mom. Lily Hippo, you make more noise than a herd of wild elephants, said Lily's big brother. Lily tried doing something very quiet. What did she do? She read a story, but she laughed out loud. Lily Hippo, not so loud, they said. At school, Lily's best friends were Hester and Lou. And sometimes even Hester and Lou were upset with Lily because of how loud she was. She was too loud. Then a new teacher came to Lily's school and her name was Miss Lupiola. And she wore a big red poncho. She taught music and drama. Lily liked Miss Lupiola. She decided to be in the school play. On the first day of rehearsals, Miss Lupiola taught everyone a fast stomping dance. And Lily tried to do the dance very quietly. Wonderful work, called out Miss Lupiola. But you could try stomping just a lo little louder this time, please. Lily really liked Miss Lupiola. So Lily stomped a lot louder. Magnificent, cried Miss Lupiola. Lily Hippo, would you like to lead the dance? <gasps> Lily loved Miss Lupiola. Lily was in charge of crashing the cymbals and banging the drums for storm noises growling and roaring for the fierce lion noises, cackling and screeching for the wicked witch noises, singing the song about the very brave prince and clapping in time to all the music. And on the night of the play, Lily was very nervous. What if she forgot what to do? What if she tried to speak, but no words came out? Or even worse, what if she was too loud? Lily could feel her heart thumping and her knees shaking. The room was very, very quiet. Everybody was waiting for Lily. Go on, Lily, whispered Miss Lupiola, nice and loud. Lily took a deep breath and then, let the show begin, she said in her loudest stage voice. And then Lily did her best fast stomping and her best crash banging, her best growling and roaring, her best cackling and screeching and her best singing and clapping. And everybody loved it. Hooray for Lily Hippo, they cried out. And the sound of all that clapping and stamping and cheering was very special and very loud. A bit like Lily. And there she is going home from the play She's all tired out from all that stomping and clapping and screeching and singing and being just a little too loud. Well, can we do, hmm, can we put our five monkeys up in the tree? I've got my five little monkeys swinging in the tree. Teasing Mr. Crocodile, you can't catch me. Along comes Mr. Crocodile, as hungry as can be, and he goes snap. So hide one of your monkeys. Four little monkeys are swinging in the tree. Teasing Mr. Crocodile, you can't catch me. 
Along comes Mr. Crocodile, as hungry as can be, and he goes snap. So now three little monkeys are swinging in the tree, teasing Mr. Crocodile, you can't catch me. Along comes Mr. Crocodile, as hungry as can be, and he goes snap. Two little monkeys are swinging in the tree, teasing Mr. Crocodile, you can't catch me. Along comes Mr. Crocodile, as hungry as can be, and he goes snap. One little monkey is swinging in the tree, teasing Mr. Crocodile, you can't catch me. Along comes Mr. Crocodile, as hungry as can be, and he goes snap. So now no little monkeys are swinging in the tree. I'd better watch out so he won't catch me. Whew. Let's have a little fun with one of the, our books. This is one called Press Here by Hervé Toulet. And I had forgotten about this book and still uh, someone who had heard it me read it before mentioned it yesterday and I thought, yeah, we should have that again. Are you ready? I'm going to press here and turn the page. Well, great. Now I'm going to press the yellow dot again. The first one. What do you think is going to happen? Oh, perfect. Now I'm going to rub the dot on the left gently. Well done. Now I'm going to rub the one on the right gently. That's fabulous, isn't it? Then I'm going to do five quick taps on the yellow one. One, two, three, four, five. And oh. so five taps on the red. One, two, three, four, five. And five taps on the blue. Oops. Perfect. Now I'm going to shake the book just a little bit. Oh, not bad, but maybe I should shake it a little harder. Oh, there, that's well done, right? Now I'm going to tilt the page to the left just to see what happens. Hmm. And then tilt it to the right. Excellent. Now I think I'll shake the book one more time just to get everything back in order. Hmm, interesting. I'm going to press really hard on all the yellow dots, starting over here. One, two, three, four, five, and then turn the page. <gasps> That's funny. Should I turn the lights back on? How do you think I should do that? I'll press them all again. Perfect. Oh, wait a minute. Hmm. Two of those dots seem to have switched places. But which one? Hmm. Well, I guess I'll have to press hard on all of the dots, really hard to see what happens. So I'm going to go red, yellow, blue, red, yellow, blue, red, yellow, blue, red, Blue, yellow, red, yellow, blue. Oh. We turned off all the lights again, but turned down all the colors. It's not bad. Should I shake it just a little? Oh my goodness, that 
That's pretty, isn't it? Now, what do you think? Should I try blowing on it to see if I can get rid of the black? Maybe a little harder. Can you blow with me? Oh, oops, that might have been a little too hard. So I'm gonna stand the book up straight to make those dots drop down again and I'll just tap it a little bit on top. There we go. It's perfect. So could you all clap your hands just once? Clap. Oh, can you clap twice? Clap, clap. Three times, clap, 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 more. Clap, 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 clap. Oh, keep on clapping. Clap, 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 clap. Can you do it more? And even more? Clap, 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 clap. Oh, I think that was too much and too loud, kind of like Lily. So quick, I'm gonna press the white dot see what happens. Oh. We're right back where we started, aren't we? If we wanted, we could do it all over again, but we'd have to go back to the beginning. And I think that's for another time. Maybe when you borrow this book from the library. But should we clap for the book? All right. Well, I'm thinking we could have one more story and then do our, hmm, well, you know our bubble gum. And then we'll have the flannel board and we'll finish up with our point and book. So let's have a story called <gasps> Little White Fish. This is by Guido Van Gennecten. He did the pictures and the story. And this is published by Clavis Books. And I like the illustrations in this. I think you'll be able to see them really well. Little white fish is crying. He can't find his mommy. So is this little white fish's mommy? No, you say, well, what is that? Oh, it's a crab and it's red. Is this little white fish's mommy? No, it's a starfish. And what color is it? Orange. Is this little white fish's mommy? No, it's a snail and it's yellow. Is this little white fish's mommy? No, not this either. Mm -mm. It's a turtle. And what color is it? Green. And this, this here, is this little white fish's mommy? No, definitely not. It's a whale and it is blue. And this one? Is this little white fish's mommy? No, it's an octopus and it's purple. This is my mommy. Little white fish smiles. My mommy has all the colors of the rainbow, just like me. So you see the red and the orange and the yellow and the green and the blue and the purple. And we saw all of those colors, didn't we? With each of the animals that little white fish saw. Well, can you reach in your pocket? Because it's time to find your bubble gum. And when you find it, pull it on out, unwrap it, throw the wrapper in the trash and pop the gum in your mouth and chew it up until it's all soft and squishy. And 
then get your hand ready. One, two, three. Spit your gum in your hand and clap your other hand on top. And we've got sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, stick it on your chin. On stick. Sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, stick it on your shoulder. On stick. Sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, stick it on your cheek. On stick. Sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, stick it on your back. On stick. Sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, stick it on your nose. On stick. Sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, stick it on your knee. On stick. Sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, stick it on mom or dad. On stick. Sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, stick it on your toe. On stick. Sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum. Let's throw it in the trash. I'm going to use my blue flannel board today because we're going down in the sea for this flannel board's rhyme. I swam in the sea, and what did I see? an orange clownfish swimming by me. I swam in the sea and what did I see? A gold seahorse swimming by me. I swam in the sea and what did I see? A green sea turtle swimming by me. I swam in the sea and what did I see? A wavy stingray swimming by me. I swam in the sea, and what did I see? A red lobster swimming by me. I swam in the sea, and what did I see? A long-tusked walrus swimming by me. I swam in the sea, and what did I see? A pink squid swimming by me. I swam in the sea, and what did I see? A pinchy crab swimming by me. I swam in the sea, and what did I see? A purple octopus swimming by me. Get those legs all out there. How many legs does an octopus have? I swam in the sea, and what did I see? A blue dolphin swimming by me. I swam in the sea, and what did I see? A brown eel swimming by me. I swam in the sea, and what did I see? A jiggly, jiggly jellyfish swimming by me. I swam in the sea, and what did I see? A yellow starfish swimming by me. I swam in the sea, and what did I see? A gray seal swimming by me. I swam in the sea, and what did I see? A black and white orca swimming by me. I swam in the sea, and what did I see? A toothy shark swimming by me. A shark? A shark? 
Goodbye. Blub, 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 blub. Tonight we're going to have Sandra Boynton's pajama time. Well, the moon is up. It's getting late. So let's get ready to celebrate. It's pajama time. So pull on the bottoms, put on the tops, get yourself set to pajama debop. It's pajama time. Now some are old and some are new. Some are red, like Bernard's, and some are blue. Some are fuzzy, some are not. But we can all pajama in whatever we've got. It's pajama time. Oh yes, it's pajama time. Now some are pink and some are green and some are the ugliest we've ever seen. They may be stripy or polka dot, but we can all pajama in whatever we've got. It's pajama time. So jammy to the left, and jammy to the right. Jamma, 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 PJ. Everybody's wearing them for dancing tonight. Jammy, jamma, 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 PJ. Now all around the room in one big line, wearing our pajamas and looking so fine. It's pajama time. Then hop into bed, turn out the light. We can have a party in our dreams tonight. It's pajama time. Hush. It's pajama time. Hush, hush. It's pajama time. Good night. Sleep tight. And thank you for joining me and Bernard for some bedtime stories here from Wood Library. Hope we'll see you again next week.